What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fi here. Going to be talking about my very early plays for this giant Friday slate. A lot is going to change. Uh, I will be live with you guys at 6 Eastern, and we can go over all of it then. I'm going to go game by game, but it's going to be a quick version. So I hope you guys are ready. And here we go, rapid fire. I've done a little bit of research already. I posted my my core plays and all that stuff. And uh, we're going to we're going to just try and take care of it as quickly as possible. Uh, as usual, try to avoid the first game just because of all the late news we tend to get. But uh, if you had to play, if I had to play anyone here, it would be Kristaps, who's been unbelievable, um, showing massive upside. Kristaps would be my favorite, followed by Avdia, but probably not playing either. And then on the other side, I certainly understand the argument for Jalen McDaniels. Uh, I think PJ Washington is probably my highest level of interest. So I'm going to put a little note that he, you know, keep an eye on this one. Um, but I, I do think PJ Washington is definitely in play. He's been, you know, consistently gets gets there or right near there. Uh, and a point, point per minute has been really good in a good matchup. So that's pretty much it for me. But I, those are not priorities by any means. Um, all right. Uh, on the Denver side, very strangely, I have very little interest in anything over here. I think that's going to change. I think I'm going to keep trying out Jamal Murray. Um, uh, he's shown, a, you know, he's starting to shoot the ball better, getting much more in the flow of the offense. They've been some blowouts, so it's kind of a little hard to track. And then I definitely have a little bit of interest in Bruce Brown, but a little bit concerned about the uh, the fact that Bones is back. He had his, you know, I, I liked him better when Bones was out, but I still think he has a big enough role and, and is solid. So, and then obviously you consider the the Jokic play every time he's out there. Uh, if we get enough value, I certainly don't mind doing that against uh, Capella, who's a pretty good defender, but still, I think that it's just hard to hard not to want to play Jokic. On the other side, Jalen Johnson is projecting as the best value on the slate currently. That's going to change. I can pretty much guarantee it. And I think that uh, we, we don't even know if he's going to play, first of all, but we've got Capella questionable also. Uh, AJ Griffin, I think, is a really interesting play. This kid's really talented. I don't know how much offense they're going to let him create or do or do much with, but he's a talented kid. Um, first round pick, a guy who had a lot of hype, could have been, the you know, talk, talked in his junior year about, you know, or senior year of high school, how he could have been the number one. I do think that uh, AJ Griffin is in play. And then you could always take a shot on Jokic, but it's going to be coming down to Jalen Johnson or AJ Griffin as, as potential priorities for me. Right now, I've got Johnson in there, but I don't feel great about it want to get a feel for how many minutes he'll play. And I think you could get, you could do some things on the other side with either Murray, Jokic or Brown. Don't think I'm playing multiples, but this is the kind of game where maybe you could target it. And I guess to that, to that, to that thing, you, you can always consider DeJounte Murray at 8,800 and you can always consider Trey Young at 9,700. Neither priorities, but certainly not bad plays. Um, all right. On the Lakers side, I probably want to do nothing here. Uh, they do give up threes. LeBron is pretty three point reliant these days. I don't feel like I'm going to end up doing anything with this, but Davis, LeBron, I I just think I'll probably pass. Um, on the Milwaukee side, same thing as all with all, as always with with Giannis. I, I don't know why Drew Holiday. I think I think he's too cheap, um, and I love him in this matchup. Love it better if it was in L.A. where you can be going home, but uh, get a little narrative. So I have Holiday as a as a guy who I I don't have as a priority, but he's just on that tier beneath, and maybe he becomes a priority by the end of the day. Uh, on the Cleveland side over here, I don't understand why Donovan Mitchell's 8,400. I know that, you know, there's been some blowouts and some weird back-to-backs and they played a lot of games in a row and he's had some down games. doesn't matter at all to me. Love him in this spot. Worry about a blowout for, for Cleveland. And I, I love Mobley. I don't even, I, Mobley is a priority for me here. Um, I love both those guys. And then if you're going to play the blowout route, I think Levert becomes an incredible play. If Kevin Love is out, especially we'll see about Kevin Love later today. Um, but I, I think you do want some exposure to these guys. Just worries me a little bit about the blowout, which makes me want to run it back. And I think that Paolo, like, it's just, I don't like the matchup for him. And they have too many of these, you know, you've got high usage guys who even on the minutes limit, but when you've got, you know, Cole Anthony and Fultz both going to play minutes now, I, I'm just probably staying away here. Um, that's, that's just where I'm at right now, but uh, on the Orlando side anyway, but I might, I might, I may change my mind later on that one. Uh Miami Boston, uh, you know, look, it's actually a pretty decent matchup for Bam if the Butler was out and but I think everybody's going to play and I think they didn't like the way they were getting stomped curb stomped the other day. That's a I don't like that. I use that term um, the way they got completely stomped by this Boston team, but uh, just can't find a play that makes sense to me on, on Miami in this matchup. Boston is the best offense like in the history of basketball right now. And uh, I love Jalen Brown. I will make Jalen Brown my priority. And I love Jason Tatum if I'm not playing Brown. Very likely I play one of them. They just, 
Yeah, it's the, one of them get there every game, and if not, maybe you mix in a Horford or a Smart. I think all of those are extremely viable. Uh, with everybody healthy, you'd think that it would kill everything. It doesn't matter. Like Tatum would have put up a million the other night if he wanted to. Um, they just didn't need it. So I, I do think that using one of Jalen or Jason is is always a good idea. And it is going to be a tougher matchup now with Butler, assuming that he guards Tatum, If assuming that he's in there. I think that opens things up a little bit more for Jalen to, to be the main offensive guy. I like the price at 8K. Um, all right, let's talk about Toronto and, and Brooklyn. Everybody from Toronto looks reasonable to me. Um, Fred Van Vliet, to me, fits in the uh, Drew Holiday category as uh, maybe not too cheap, but like with everybody healthy, it's hard to really prioritize. The one thing I'd say is we've seen Siakam, especially in this matchup before, just massacre. So we've got him right now. Let me just take a look at his minutes. Uh, you got him at th- 37 minutes. Uh, I will take some Siakam at 9,300. I think that's a very, very interesting play. And I probably will play a little bit of Van Vliet. Neither quite priorities, but certainly both really, really strong plays, in my opinion. Uh, on the net side, uh, it's a tough matchup because you're going to get tough defenders no matter who you are, and especially whoever OG's guarding. But I think that, uh, look, Kyrie at this price is always in play, and Kevin Durant has been awesome. So that's all I can say about that. And uh, th- then you get the weird Joe Harris and Seth Curry early on values. I'm using them as placeholders. But one thing I'll point out is, if let's just say the slate started right now. Joe Harris being, you know, having a two-point better projection and being projected to be 20% owned versus the 2% of Curry, it's a great example of, you could just play Curry instead of, of Harris if you're trying to get different in the lineup, if it started right now, which you're not, you know, you're not, you're not probably going to prioritize either of these guys by the end of the day, but they certainly both are in play. And I think that you just take the, you know, the low owned Curry. The The problem is I expect it to be so low owned later that I, cause there's probably gonna be value that I think Joe Harris ends up really low owned if, unless, you know, once we get some, some real, real value. Uh, Joel Embiid is really good. It's a tough matchup, but he's really good. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, I think Embiid is another spend up that we consider. I have him rated a little bit ahead of Giannis, a little bit ahead of Jokic at the moment, but none of them priorities for me. A little bit worried about Philly in this game. Uh, Memphis can can sometimes just blister people at home, and I would keep an eye out for that. David Roddy, I don't think I want to do that. Uh, Adams should get plenty of run against Embiid because they don't really have another guy who matches up right, although you could could argue that Jaron Jackson could guard him. And everybody else is just sort of a, okay, they're they're fine, but probably not going to be my priorities on this slate. Going over to uh, New Orleans, Sacramento, I will take a, a, an angle here. Um, first of all, I like the Nance price at at 4K. Uh, Trey Murphy is probably a little bit priced up and, and very shooting reliance. So I'll go away from that. Dyson Daniels has looked good. Just a lot of bodies. Assuming that PJ, the CJ plays tonight, I don't care. If no one plays Zion, I will play Zion. I will be that guy. Um, in fact, as I look at it now, it's like a Zion Siakam as my top spend ups feels kind of good. And I like those guys both quite a bit, especially factoring the ownership Zion is, I mean, can't they just learn this is Zion's offense. Look at what, if you watch him the last couple of games out there, it, it's all him and he can go do whatever he wants. He sets everyone up. He's unselfish. He's going to get a million fantasy points in a bunch of different ways. So much of the time, great matchup. Love that it's on the road. So you can hope it stays close. And by the way, I think McCollum is in play. Um, but uh, I think, but I, I really, really do want to just keep playing Zion and 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 know that fifties are mostly like fifty should be like more often than forties in, in my opinion in this spot, or at least when he gets there, he could also get to like sixty or seventy against this kind of a team. Kade Bates Diop early on looks like a great value. So does Trey Jones. So does Trey uh, Zach Collins. Uh, a little as Isaiah Roby. I just have the Spurs whole team as a question mark because it always makes me nervous with the Spurs value. Um, the guy I played the other night a little bit, which no one did, was Romeo Langford, And he was really good to me. He put up 25 fantasy points at 3,200. Um, I think that's kind of an interesting pivot off of the chalkier Spurs. But none of it feels like great. But I think you can also talk yourself into a nice stack if you're going to play guys like a Zion uh, or a McCollum and a Nance. And then you run it back with three like Collins, Bates Diop, and Trey Jones. I think that's really viable. Or you want to throw in Keldon Johnson and, and Roby instead. I think that's all very viable. So this is a game that I think is probably the most interesting to stack, which sucks because it's the Spurs, but I still think we have to address it. Um, and it, I think it's I think it's a good one to stack as of right now. Uh, they raised the price a little too much on Jabari. Going back to Phoenix, I wanted to play him. I kind of still want to play him. Don't think I can be able to do it. Shangun, just don't think I'm quite there. They're they're both interesting. Um, as is Eason, but I don't I don't think that 
any of them end up making my main lineups, I think they're all completely in play. Um, that's just where I'm at. Uh, Devin Booker is going to be unowned again and is just nuts. I mean, he was 20 for 25 from the other night. Was he 17 for 28 the game before that? Uh, he's unbelievable when he gets going and, and he's going to have no ownership again. I will take shots on Devin Booker. He's not a priority for me, but I will take shots. I think one of Booker, Aiton, and Payne always crushes here. The problem is I worry about some game script issues and them possibly blowing out this Houston team, which has to be considered at least. But all three of those guys honestly look like really, really interesting low owned plays. And I think we should uh, we should consider one of them. Uh, Booker, Payne, Aiton, that is. And I think even Bridges you could consider if the game stays close. I just wish I had somebody I liked on Houston that I that I really wanted to run back. Indy, Utah, another game that looks very, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Indy, Utah. Excuse, what, did I, what did I say there? Uh, I, I, I messed up with my Jabari Smith take. Sorry, sorry. I meant, I meant to say Jabari Smith, not Jalen Smith. So it's not Jalen Smith going back. I do like Jabari. I do like Jalen a little bit. I don't like Jabari. Um, 4,700, good matchup. It's just you have to worry about the, the rotations and whatnot. If Halliburton doesn't play, the whole slate is different. You're playing Matherin. You're playing uh, probably McConnell um everywhere and i think that uh yeah we just have to see what happens with 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 halliburton as of right now i think he's gonna gonna go um but i i think everybody here is in play miles turner it feels like an extreme price he's been really good this year good matchup for him uh jalen smith i get i mentioned as interesting i think buddy healed still kind of interesting i prefer the halliburton matherin uh for ceilings uh, i don't mind buddy healed as one of them and then i do like kelly o a little bit I think Beasley, Clarkson, Sexton, all these guys are interesting. I like Sexton better on FanDuel, but I have him. You see, he's on my core in FanDuel, but I do like uh, Sexton quite a bit. So I think this Utah indie game is another one that I'm considering stacking. I just hope that uh, hope that when I do it again, that I don't get I don't I don't get taken out of the millionaire maker with a shot because I uh, because the game blows out too much with the indie situation. Because indie's been good, by the way, and. Uh, this is this West coast trip that, that one game really, really frustrated me. The Lakers also should have beat them badly. They came back at the end. All right. Chicago golden state. Uh, this is a, a game that should have a really, really, really fast pace. Uh, I like Zach Levine here. Uh, I, I think you can consider both De- DeRozan and Vooch interesting as well. Um, so I'm just going to put like one, one bowl again, not, not, not a priority. Levine is close. But and, and and DeRozan is close, but not not quite getting to them as priorities. And then on the other side, uh, I like the matchup a lot for Draymond, but everybody's getting to the right price, and so I'll just keep doing what I keep doing. Play Clay, hope you get the the, the monster three point night. And I think he's, you know, even when he doesn't hit it, he's not going to kill you. He's going to be right in that thirties range. Uh, every now and then you get a blowout or something, he doesn't do anything. I'm okay with with going with that. So a lot of things to look at. That's my first look going game by game. I hope that we, uh, you know, again, I'll be there later at, at 6 Eastern. Sheets will not be there. But let's make some money tonight, guys. Let's get back on track. I almost had a real shot in the NFL. I, if I get a Gabe Davis touchdown on that last Bills drive, I think I ship it. I think I ship the, the 100000 for the 222, and I think I, I may tie for the other one. I had pretty much all the other nuts, James Cook, and then I used the 200 on on what's his name, who at least caught a pass for you know, two fantasy points. But then I had all the nuts every other spot, so it would have been kind of nice. Gabe Davis was my captain, so that would have been a, a nice one. But anyway, let's let's get back on track tonight. Let's win some money, and uh, yeah, good luck, everybody.